Hi everyone and welcome back to Wano. I know what you all want. You want a deck build and today we're going to do an 80 second airborne division deck build. Also known as a clown car deck build. That's right. It's all about the memes with this deck. For now at least. We'll see if that changes in a future balance patch. Now. Straight away we're in logistics. So you've got a few choices here. The reality is we are going to want the M35 supply. I'm going to take that regardless because it's pretty decent. Then you have an option of your commands. You could take the Humvee, which is obviously forward deployable as donated by the new parachute symbol. That is part of the airborne. You also have a chopper, which I personally wouldn't touch with a barge pole, but some people do take them. You also have the option of the M577 CPC, which is basically a slightly armored command vehicle. Obviously slower considerably slower than a Humvee. Now what I want you to bear in mind is that there are forward deployable infantry commanders as well. So what I'd actually do here is take this which is slightly cheaper and yes it's a bit slower but it's got some armor and the reason I want something with a little bit of armor is because of the Vasilik that they have added to the Russian side. It is at the moment deadly accurate. It basically fires long range like a grenade launcher, not like a mortar. So, I'm actually going to stick that in. You get three the same, it's five points cheaper, and we're not forward deploying it. I'm not bothered about that. If I want to forward deploy a command vehicle, I'll use infantry. That's the way I'm going to look at it. Yes, it might cost me a few extra points at the start, but it's probably worth it. So, other than that, what I'd consider taking here is another M35 supply. Obviously, you do have those supply choppers. But one of the issues with the supply choppers is they can't resupply the trucks. So you can't like park it behind your lines, take the empty trucks to it, fill up the trucks, and then take them back to the front line. You could do that in Wargame. You can't do it here. Whether they're going to add that, I don't know. But it means that your choppers would have to get to the front line. The only thing they'd be good for is rearming artillery or rearming your own choppers your combat choppers behind the lines perhaps but you're not really going to want to get it too close to the front lines because it's going to get shot down so i still personally wouldn't take a chopper now what is nice about that is you do get three of them which is a lot of supply to be fair 2500 per chopper and you get three of them quite expensive though obviously personally if you're going to take anything at the moment especially for 1v1 scenarios rather than team games where you're going to want to be across an entire map I'd take more supply trucks if you're going to take anything because you can be spread about a bit. But that would be me. What I'm going to do is move on to infantry rather than get anything else there. Now, this is an airborne deck and pretty much everything here is airborne. And you get ridiculous amounts of infantry. You get ridiculous amounts of troops in each squad. This deck is ridiculous. I mean, I don't know why you'd play anything else at the moment. So, you have the usual choice of pretty much every piece of infantry you would get with the other NATO decks, obviously Germans notwithstanding, the American decks I mean, plus some extra stuff. Now as far as commanders go, you get these guys, which have an AT4, which is nice, and the M16s, but you only get three of them. They're 145 points, but they are 12 strength. So they've got 12 members to their squad, which is massive for a command squad. Yeah, massive. However, they don't have a machine gun. So, you know, I'd rather have something with a machine gun. If you come down here to these lovely AB or Airborne Engineers commander, you get a 12-man squad, you get four availability, they are five points cheaper, and they have an M60. Now, yes, you've got the law instead of the AT4, but who cares? You should have something else defending them. This is a last ditch defending themselves. If a tank's got that close, they're probably dead anyway. But you get four of them. So I'd grab that. I think that's ridiculously good. A 12th strength commander and four of them when everything else is three. Look, the mech rifle's down there, three. So yeah, grab that, bring it in a truck, job jobbed. Now, as far as the other infantry goes, you've got a huge selection. You've got the standard military police, which people still quite like. What you have to remember is they have a long range on their recoilless rifle. They're very good up front, you know, for taking out incoming vehicles, incoming transports, and they can fire before other infantry can because of their range. 
Now their accuracy is not great and they don't fire as fast as they originally did, but they're not bad. People still take them, you will notice people taking them, especially in the 1v1 tournament. Now these guys come in a Humvee, they are forward deployable, let's stick them in. 55 points to bring them in the Humvee. Nice fast vehicle, we can spam them at the start, the forward deployable. Then we move on to the next row. I wouldn't bother with the military, the standard military police, personally. I mean, what you've got to remember here is that the military police with the M67 recoilless rifle also only have a five-man squad. Just bear that in mind. And at the moment, there is a problem in the game that infantry are melting again because something's been reverted accidentally, we think. So, we'll see. Now, you've got the airborne dragons. These get a dragon. They get two M249s. And they're a 10-man squad. And they come in a truck. We're going to add them because that gives us some more long-range anti-tank. Now, dragons aren't the best thing in the game, but they are long-range and they can scare someone off. So don't underestimate that. You've got the AB Fire Team Dragon, which are only a five-man squad, and they come in a Humvee. Eh, I'm not too overly fussed about taking those. Yes, they're still forward deployable. Yes, you still get nine in availability, but with only being a five-man squad, it's just not worth it. AB Fire Team in the AT4, again, it's a five-man squad. I wouldn't bother personally. Now, Airborne Squad come in an M35. They are a 10-man squad. They get an AT4. They get two M60s and eight M16s. So we're going to take two of those because that is ridiculously good. Now, as you'll notice, the big issue here is all of these squads only come with an M35. Now, transports and APCs and things are the, what you will struggle with in this deck more than anything else. So just bear that in mind. You've got the Airborne Engineers, which have your satchel charges. Now, please bear in mind that they have finally fixed satchel charges. It doesn't appear that they get thrown when your units are in motion anymore. I think they now have to be stood still to throw them. It does say motion accuracy there still, but I'm not convinced that I could see my troops throwing them. That needs further testing, but in the games I played, I genuinely couldn't see them throwing those satchel charges while they were still running forward. But watch this space. I will test that again. So we'll take a squad of those. Because why wouldn't you? They're forward deployable. You've got the arrow rifles, which are your standard. They now come in two different types of helicopter. I'd still probably take a Black Hawk over the Chinook because the Black Hawk's got some guns on it. But that's completely up to you. Um, you've got the airborne gunners, which have the law and three m60s and our seven man squad i think that's pretty good as well so you know again for the m60s and the stunning capability i'd grab those guys you have your standard mech rifles as you do in the other divisions um they can come in the m113a3 and the m113a3 dragon so more dragon launchers i mean you could if you wanted they're a 10 man squad but honestly You've got 10 men squads up here that you can forward deploy as well, and they're cheaper. So what do you get with the mech rifles? You get three M249s. Yeah, you're down to two M249s here, but they're considerably cheaper, and you can forward deploy them. Why the heck would you add mech rifles when you can add the airborne dragons? I just, I don't, I don't grasp the pricing of these units. Uh, obviously, you've got the airborne TOW 2 launcher, which, yes, you should add this. You don't, again, need to rank this up. Take it in as trained. You get six of them. Because look at the accuracy on it. So we're going to take that. Just in a Humvee. And then other than that, I mean, you know, you've got two more spaces to play with. I would fill them. Infantry is still important in the game. And once they fix the infantry again, hopefully they won't die so quickly. I'd probably take another squad of the standard airborne. Because they get two of the M60s, which is pretty good. And then... You know, you could get some more airborne dragons if you fancied it. Uh, airborne gunners are still pretty good. I mean, I'd be tempted to take more airborne dragons. And then you've got a nice selection. I mean, if you really wanted, you could take mech rifles and have the three machine guns. I mean, yes. You can't really say that three machine guns is a bad thing at the end of the day. But, I, you know, it depends how you want to play this deck. And realistically, right now, it's all about forward deployment. So I would grab yourself some airborne dragons and call it quits there. The other thing I want to note, by the way, is with the mech rifles, 
again, they're, they're good. But if you want to bring them in as veteran, like you can with the airborne stuff by default, you can only bring in six per card. And you can bring in nine of these guys. So, you know, each to their own, of course, but I would go with that. If you're wanting something that's faster and forward deployable, because obviously the Humvee is 72 and 108, whereas the M35 is 54 and 108. So as long as you're sticking to the road when you're forward deploying for the most part, the M35 is fine. Just bear in mind that off-road taking a smaller squad is potentially beneficial because the Humvee is faster. But yeah, up to you. Artillery, artillery is still mediocre to terrible. Uh, I would take some mortars because you want something that you can smoke with, if nothing else. Um, you, your choice is basically the M125 or the M30. Now, honestly, it really doesn't matter here. Obviously, the advantage of the mortar that is tracked is it can move around faster. The disadvantage of this is that it will move around slower. But you can get more, and they are a lot cheaper. I wouldn't get them anything but trained still, because it doesn't make a difference in the grand scheme of things. I mean, it might increase the rate of fire. It does, but it's really not worth it. I'd be using these for smoking more than doing damage, because they're still not accurate enough to do damage. From testing, they're just all over the place. They're not going to hit what you want them to hit. Unless you've got an enemy with a load of clustered units, and then you might hit something. So, take the uh, toad ones, because they're quite fun. You know, they're a nice little unit, the animations are quite fun to watch. You get eight of them, not doing any harm, they're slightly bigger, and they have a decent amount of rounds. When it comes to the actual guns, this is, you know, completely up to you. I find it very interesting that you can bring these in, in a chopper. I haven't actually tried that. Uh, I probably wouldn't bring them in in a chopper, to be fair. I assume they're slung underneath it. I haven't actually checked. But I'd probably just bring them in an M35 if you're going to bring those. Um, 60 rounds, 105 mil. And then you've got 155 mils here. They're 50 points more. I think still, if you're going to bring in artillery, something that does more damage is better. So I'd still be adding these, but actually, I just unless I have a point spare at the end, I wouldn't even bother with that. I'd just bring in some mortars. Now, when it comes to tanks, you are spoilt for choice. Not. So basically, we've got the M11P Abrams. And you don't get a lot of them, but they're very good units. Now, as you'll notice, most of the time, I bring in tanks as veteran. But here, it severely limits the number you can bring in by half, obviously, because that's six, and then it goes down to three. That's not good enough. So I would take two of them at trained and try and keep a command somewhere near them to buff them up to veteran. Because the reality is you will want them at veteran to fight off enemy tanks that are going to be a veteran if you're going up against a, a deck with decent tanks. You know, it doesn't matter whether that's Soviet or NATO. You'll want something to compete. But they've got good armor. So that's fair. Then obviously you've got the Sheridan Command Tank. Which is the only command tank you get. So I'd stick that in there. It's not ideal. But it's better than nothing. And obviously you get the standard Sheridan. I'd be using these things potentially as fire support. And the command to buff the other tanks if I could. You know keeping it slightly out of range. And just buffing the rank of the other tanks i'd take one stack of those but you know they're there for me for fire support i'm not going to be trying to kill tanks with them and then i take tow humvees because clown cars moving on to recon clown cars uh the humvee agl is the best grenade launcher in the game right now compared to the offerings from the soviets this is the better option it's deadly accurate it does more damage and generally speaking will melt a squad of infantry and if you have a few of them will melt it even faster so i'd grab yourself a stack of those you get the ever delightful bradley which you don't get any other apcs in this deck so 
we're going to take the Bradley. We're going to take it as just trained because we don't need to take it as veteran. The Toll 2 has fantastic accuracy and the Bushmaster is good as it is. Now, obviously in this deck you could say that you're without some very good anti-tank on the ground because your tanks are limited in number. You could take something like the Kiwa with its Hellfire missiles which have a very nice range. That's completely up to you if you feel confident taking a chopper. You know, they're pretty decent, they're semi-active radar, they do a lot of damage. That's up to you. If you feel confident taking a chopper and managing it, take it. It's probably worth it. But there are healers we can take as well, so I'll leave that to you. You definitely still want to take some airborne scouts or something. These guys, forward deployable. You get nine of them, they come in a Humvee. They're not a big squad is my only complaint. There's only a four-man squad there, but a lot of infantry recon in the game are only four-man squads. I'd grab yourself some of those, because it's nice to have recon infantry. These guys come in a six-man squad. They can come in in a Blackhawk or a Humvee. They get the M249s. Again, they're very good. So, And you've got plenty of number one slots here, so one-point activation slots. So I'd take the LRS as well. And then... I'd consider taking a chopper as well. I'm almost tempted to take more spammy AGL Humvees because they are very annoying and they do chew through infantry. But you know what I'd probably do? I would stick for that extra point. i just go with the Kiwa. On the off chance I really need to kill an enemy tank. But do be careful, because remember that the enemy now do have access to the K-50, which is very good at anti-air. Now, moving on to our anti-air, the Stingers have been nerfed. Disappointingly, or correctly, because it's probably about damn time they were nerfed. Their accuracy has been significantly reduced finally. However, they're still really good, so I would still take them. I would also take some meme cars. Our Mimi Clown Cars, Avengers, Avengers really good, very, very fast. They have stingers, they're still accurate enough to do damage. 12 of those, 8 of those, I mean you could even take more of those if they're available. But they're just not, so you can only take one stack. I wish there were two cards of the Avengers. Uh, you could take the Vulcans if you want, they're probably not terrible, but you know, they're kind of stationary and not going to move, and the problem that I have with anything that is stationary when it comes to anti-air is after it fires once generally you want to move this stuff so you could if you really wanted to obviously you also have the option of the anti-air choppers your ranges aren't great on them though honestly i wouldn't bother with either of those they're a better healer option so i'd leave it at that here what you have to accept then is that your air defense isn't great so you're going to have to bring aircraft. But it's fine, because when we get the air tab, you'll see that aircraft aren't a problem. So moving on to helos. Helos, we've got the little bird. Now, I would add the little bird to my deck, just because I love the little bird as a chopper in video games. I love riding around it in armor. I loved it. I've loved it in every game it's ever been in. I just, I definitely have a thing for the little bird. It's probably not the thing to take in your deck, though, in fairness. The Heavy Hog is a really good option. It's got some huge rockets, 127mm, so I'd stick that in. You can only take one card, though. Then you've got the Cobra as an option with either rockets or you've got the Tow Cobra with a standard tow. These are reasonably cheap. You've got the Apache with the rockets, 70mm rockets, pretty much the same as the Cobra, except the Cobra is a little bit cheaper. Obviously, the Apache has a better gun and slightly better armor. Then you've got the AH-64A Apache with its Hellfires and some rockets. And then you've got the really expensive Apache which just has Hellfires. Don't get the really expensive Apache. It's not worth it for the 12 missiles. I would stick the AH-64 Apache in there. That gives you more Hellfires for when you are struggling against tanks, if you're against a tank deck. It's all gonna come in handy. You've just gotta be careful with them. Apaches are still brilliant. And then I'd probably take some Cobras to fill out the other single point or single activation point slot. And then you're at 36 points. Move on to air. 
you can come back to any of this if you've got points left but air is where we want to pick out some decent stuff so in air you're very lucky in this deck to have not just one card of f15c eagles but two and each card can come with two so add them both so you know what I was saying about your air defense, you don't have the best in the game. You don't have your Chaparrales, you don't have the Ihawks, but you do have four F-15C Eagles. So as long as you're careful with them, you will to some extent control the skies. And that's really all you need. I mean, you've got the F-4E Phantom as well, and you can bring in four of those if you really want, but you've got two sets of F-15C Eagles. If you're not managing to control the skies with those, you're in trouble. Other planes, you've got a good selection. You've got the F11F cluster. I'd stick that in there because, again, you are limited in your tanks. So anything you can do to fend off a huge tank deck is beneficial. So your tow missiles, your clusters, your hellfire missiles on the choppers, all of that stuff is good. Napalm I still don't like, so I wouldn't bother. You've got the anti-tank jet. We're bringing a lot of anti-tank stuff. You've got the seed, and that's the only seed you can bring. So I'd actually bring that because you're not going to have very effective ways of dealing with anti-air. And you're going to want to deal with it. So, again, I'd just take the... You could take up a ranked one, but then you've only got one, so I'd just leave it trained. Uh, HE Bomber, you don't have much selection here. You've literally got the F-15C HE. I'd stick that in there because, again, it's nice to have a HE Bomber. And then you've got five points left overall. So we could spend another three points here. And I'd actually get the A-10A rockets. Um, yes, they don't fire many rockets, but they are better than they used to be. They take a bit of punishment. They can probably get in and out taking a bit of fire. And they will kill squads of infantry, they will flatten buildings, etc, etc. They're not bad, just be careful how you use them. And again, I just take them as trained. You don't need to rank them up. So we've got two points left, so where are we going to spend them? We go back to logistics, we could take more supply, that's probably what I'm going to do. Infantry were full, artillery, I just really don't care. Artillery is just so meh still. Um, you know, you even even in 10v10s, people spam you with thinking they're going to hit your units. You just move your units out of the way. Especially when people spam that rocket artillery. It's quite amusing. Uh, tanks were full. Recon, we could take something else, but I think we've got more than enough there. Anti-air, again, you could take some Vulcans or maybe some more Stingers, but accept that you're going to rely on your aircraft. Uh, helos, again, you could take some more choppers if you're going to use them a lot, but no. I'm going to take logistics. I like to keep my stuff alive if I can. This is something I bring from Wargame. And it's a little bit difficult with the infantry in this game right now because of how quickly it melts. But in Wargame, as my infantry get injured, I rotate them out as best I can. And that's what I'd like to do in Warno. And when they're more survivable, because when they fix it, I hope, you'll be able to do that. So when they get injured, you pull them back, you heal them, and you send some others in. And if you've ever watched me play Wargame, for example, on Once on Harbour, and I'm in the middle with my squads of infantry, you know, you have my stacks of four squads moving in and out of buildings. You'll see as one squad gets injured, more and more, or one set of four stacks, I'll pull them back and replace them with others and let those guys get replenished and keep switching them in and out. And the enemy often isn't expecting that because they're not doing the same. So if you can keep your stuff alive, it's more beneficial than, you know, throwing it up there, killing the enemy stuff, but losing your unit as well. If you can half kill the enemy and they don't bother healing it, pull your stuff back, heal, go back in. You only have to kill a squad that is half health. Simple as that. Right, quick recap. We've got two stacks of M35 supply. We're going for the slightly armoured command vehicle because of the Vasilisk in the game now. We've got a very big selection of infantry. You can take pretty much what you want here, but my recommendation is bigger squads. So the Airborne Dragons, the standard Airborne. The Airborne Gunners aren't bad. I'm taking the Military Police with the M67 because they're forward deployable and they can hit enemy vehicles at a range that other infantry can't more or reasonably accurately. The Dragons are a bit hit and miss, but again, they do have a better range. 
artillery i'm just taking some mortars for smoking more than anything else i'm not going to rely on artillery for anything in this game because it's not good enough to rely on it tanks you have to take the m1ps you have to take both you don't get enough to take them as anything but trained you will take the command tank because it's the only command tank you get you will take some sheridans because they're the only other tanks so to speak you get and you'll take some humvee toes because toes are great and the Humvees are mediocre, I think, in their size, so they, they hide quite well. And then the, the actual recon Humvees have good stealth, which is great. And they have very good optics, which is better than most vehicles. So for recon, we've got the Humvee AGL because the grenade launcher is great. We've got the Bradley because the Bradley is awesome. We've got Airborne Scouts, we've got LRS, and we've taken the Kiowa. In AA, we've just taken the Humvee Stingers and the Avenger. helicopters we've got the heavy hog we've got the apache the nice one with hellfires and rockets and we've got a cobra with just rockets and then for air we've got two stacks of the f-15c eagles we've got an f-111f cluster we've got the f-16c seed the f-16c he and the a-10 rocket because we will rule the skies with this deck that is the plan and that's the deck you play to its strengths. Right now it's Clown Car Meme Rush, followed up by Strong Aircraft. That's how I would play this. That's assuming your opponent hasn't immediately quit two minutes into the game like most of Hippie's opponents did in his video. Because the Clown Car Rush is nasty, just like Helo Rushes are in Wargame. I'm not advocating Clown Car Rushes, but until it is fixed which it better be quickly, hopefully. This is a viable tactic in 1v1s, and it's putting a lot of the uh, pros, shall we say, off playing it. So hopefully we'll be getting that balanced very quickly. But, as always, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope this was helpful. Please stay tuned the rest of the week. There will be more Warno. I will do a deck build for the other division. But that's the 82nd Airborne Clown Cars. Enjoy. Have fun. I'll see you all during the week.